I, I swear it seems like a lot of people still don't know about this. And I saw it pop back up today and people seem shocked. Like, what? How did I not know about this? And so we got to talk about it again. Let's um, let's talk about the CCC, the CCP Biolab found over in Ridley, California, shall we? So Wesley Hunt put this out today. Um, says malaria, dengue fever, hepatitis, HIV, and Ebola are just some of the infection agents and parasites that were reputedly uh, reputedly uncovered at an illegal Chinese biolab in California. Diseases capable of infecting or killing untold Americans were discovered by officials and reported to be and reported to the feds. However, no one has been criminally charged for the shocking discoveries inside. The question is why, and why is nobody talking about this either? So this is. I'm going to keep talking about it because it just seems it'll get brought up a little bit of discussion will be had and then it just goes away. I, this should be like one of the biggest stories of last year. Everyone on earth should know about this, but lots of people still don't know about it. So I'm going to do a decent little segment on it right now. A secret underground lab, a bio lab in California. It has Chinese ties and this is where investigators found dangerous pathogens, vials labeled Ebola and hundreds of lab mice. The EPA just spent several days packing it up, getting it ready for incineration. All taken from an unlicensed, unregulated underground lab operated by an international fugitive, previously convicted of stealing millions in U.S. intellectual property to, quote, defeat the American aggressor. Here's a picture of that man, Jesse Zhu. He used an alias to cross the border. Yeah, so he was in Canada, and I think he was, they were trying, I think he was escaping prosecution. I think he was like on the run from authorities in Canada. Set up this lab with $2 million from accounts, investigators linked to the Chinese Communist Party. Malaria, dengue, fever, tuberculosis, hepatitis, even those packets labeled Ebola. What was that stuff? all capable of killing you, doing inside this abandoned warehouse in Central California. Inside, a staff of Chinese nationals, hundreds of mice, blood, tissue, thousands of vials of deadly biological agents, including those labeled Ebola. Now you'd think alarm bells would be going off in DC. Chinese lab, US soil, a threat of a bio attack. And yet, Zhu was only charged with selling fake COVID tests. And when the city manager called the CDC, they hung up on her repeatedly in mid-sentence. All right. So it gets worse. So they, they found the only reason they found this lab. Keep in mind, the, the only reason they found this damn lab is because a building inspector saw a garden hose poking out of a hole in the wall, like a hole, like a three quarter inch hole that was drilled in the wall. And there's this garden hose poking out. It didn't make any sense. So she investigates it and finds this lab. That's the only reason they found this undercover, like a uh, regular commercial building. You know, there's no signs of anything nefarious going on. How many more of these labs are there? So there's, there's that now when she reports it to people, it like nobody wanted to touch this thing. It was like, everybody was kind of just like distancing themselves from it and only doing the bare minimum of what they had to do. And it seemed like everybody just wanted this to go away. Um, this is a bit of a longer clip, but I want to play the whole thing because this is this is an interview with the new CDC director, not Rochelle Walensky, but yeah, this chick. So, and she gets grilled pretty hard here, and she's very condescending in this. It's very nonchalant. Like this isn't a huge, gigantic deal. It's the stuff that was found at this lab should be extremely alarming to everyone. And everybody's trying to sweep this under the rug. And the CDC director is acting very nonchalant. Like this wasn't a big deal at all. It's this whole thing is highly, highly suspicious. Chairman, Dr. Cullen, I appreciate you being here today. Uh, in addition to being a member of the energy commerce committee, I serve on select committee on China 
Uh, the Select Committee recently published a bombshell bipartisan report. Uh, you're aware of it. You've said on the illegal bio lab that was discovered in Reedley, California. This warehouse was located in the center of a small town just across the street from an elementary school and a block down from the city hall. Uh, the clandestine, they're calling it a bio lab, was a disaster waiting to happen. The CDC's response, or rather the lack of response, clearly endangered millions of Americans. Uh, and there were a couple of things that really stood out to me. The first is that the CDC's select agent program completely failed the people of Ridley, California. The CDC literally refused. They did not respond when they were requested. They responded months later and only when uh, Congressman Costa made that request uh, to uh, come to the town and, and assess the situation. This, the discovery, I remind you, was made by a housing code inspector who was tracing a garden hose that was, went in a window. That's how this was found. It took a phone call from Costa to get there finally. Once the CDC arrived months after the first request, the investigation he conducted was completely unprofessional and inadequate. And I say that as a professional in the field. The CDC didn't test one vial, even the ones that were labeled tuberculosis, SARS-CoV-2, and Ebola. An entire refrigerator listed, labeled Ebola. That is a... Uh, so... <laughs> You might think, like, well, why would they be so nonchalant and not do a lot of testing and not look very hard when the CDC came there? And why would it take them three months to get there? Well, if you don't look that hard, you don't find certain things. And then you can sort of have like plausible deniability, like oopsie daisies. Well, we never saw that. You can play dumb. Wait till later in this video. Select federal agent, by the way, and HIV was there. Uh, this is a. Uh, this facility is completely unlicensed warehouse, no licensing whatsoever. Over 20 potential pathogens, so a thousand transgenic, nice, humanized. Uh, there were zero isolation facilities that would be necessary to either legally or safely handle these agents. And per perhaps most egregious and simple minded, the agency didn't even bother to translate the Chinese labels. There were some vials that had only Chinese labels. Didn't even ask for a translation on this. Amazing. Uh, when local officials started to dispose of these materials, they asked CDC what to do with the Ebola. Again, a federal select agent. And a CDC branch chief, I have these emails I'd like to submit for uh, the record. Without objection. Thank you. CDC branch chief belatedly responded saying, ah, we don't see an urgent need to test these samples at the moment. Most of the material we identified was not considered a serious threat to public health. Ebola. Ebola. HIV, SARS-CoV-2, hepatitis, malaria, and Ebola not considered a serious threat to public health. But, uh, you know, um, the conclusion made by the experts at CDC that a refrigerator labeled Ebola was unlikely to contain Ebola. And you look at the totality of this situation, it, it reads like a nightmare, a horror story. In what world is this okay? So they had a whole ass refrigerator labeled Ebola, a whole refrigerator labeled Ebola. How do you expect the American people to take our public health institutions seriously when this is their reaction? to a very real situation. Uh, the CDC should not ignore pleas from local public health. And by the way, the California Public Health Service asked them to sample this stuff too. The CDC should test substances if requested by local government. Sur surely that meets a threshold test. And I'd like you to explain, um, is the CDC supposed to be the first line of defense for human infection agents in the United States? Well, thank you, Congressman, for the opportunity to respond. There were a number of inaccuracies in that report. And so I want to make sure you know that when we were asked and invited by the leaders of that investigation, FBI, FDA, uh, state and local officials, we did deploy. We did look at, um, uh, we were there for a two and a half day investigation. Um, and we did not see any evidence of select agents. Not only did we look at all of the uh, the, the paperwork, the vials, the, the freezers, um, we uh, let me just because we're running out of time, let me reclaim it. Yes, they responded, but they did not respond when they were first requested. They responded months, months later. 
So that's I mean, that, and we have that on, I mean, we, we had that examined by the FBI, came to our committee and told us that. That's who we got that information from. If you have better information than the FBI, you need to let us know. Great. We would be happy to, to share the um, more about the timeline. But when we were asked, we did deploy no select agents um, on, on site. So she's just bold faced lying here, right? The FBI told us the timeline. <laughs> It took you three months to respond to this. And we got this information from the FBI. She says, okay, well, we'll be happy to share our timeline with you later. So you're just denying it boldface. You're not providing any evidence to the contrary. And you're doing it with a smirk on your face, smugly and arrogantly. And you're just going to move on like this is no big deal. Right there. Um, and we can. Yeah, you know, you didn't test for anything. Well, so, right, this is where our experts did the two and a half day review. I want to address what you were talking about related to Ebola. When we heard after the fact that someone said something was labeled Ebola, we took 300 pictures. We did not see one. Um, it bit was of on evidence. the front. So she's saying we took a bunch of pictures. We were there for two and a half days. We didn't see any Ebola. We didn't see any Ebola. They had a whole refrigerator labeled Ebola. This Mandy Cohen chick, this is the same. I can't remember what state department she was in charge of, what state health department, but there's a video of her talking about how they determined distancing policy. And she's like, well, I just called up my friend who's like, hey, are you guys doing this over there? And, and they're like, yeah, that's what we're doing over here. And she's like, okay, well, we're going to do this too. And she's like, and that's how we determined our policy. And then she laughs about it. She's on video talking. Now we come to find out that the six feet social distancing thing was just never based on anything. It was just some art. Nobody even really knows where that number came from, the six feet thing. It was just sort of a arbitrary thing that was thrown out there in the beginning and everybody ran with it and it became science. Trust the science. Well, that's who this lady is. This is, this lady is a politician. She's not a scientist. This is the head of the CDC now. She replaced Rochelle Walensky because, well, she should also be in prison. But this woman is a demon. She's trying to pretend that all the that they just oopsie daisies didn't see any of these infectious agents, the labels, any of it. She's just trying to say they didn't see it. Part of a refrigerator. We didn't see that. We asked folks to say, "Do you have a picture of that? Could we validate that for someone else?" No one could validate that for us. Um, so you know, so we, we just not- blow off the California Public Health Department and say, "Oh, we don't believe." It. And so all this is, is just flat out denial. You know, they've got their pictures, they've got their statements, they've got their California health department, they've got the FBI creating a timeline. And she's just like, no, it's wrong. Don't know what to tell you. Sorry, it's wrong. This is like, this is where we've gotten to with what are supposed to be our trusted institutions. This is the CDC. Prior to COVID, the, you said the CDC, or like you say, I work for the CDC, or be like, oh, a CDC person, you must be super smart and really reliable and trustworthy. The CDC is a joke now because of this, because of this type of behavior from the people at the top that are saying, trust the science, and there was never any science whatsoever. And that's what she's doing again here. Well, you know, sir, your stuff is just. COVID misinformation and what we're doing over here at the CDC is trusting the science. So take your tinfoil hat wearing propaganda somewhere else, mister. You know, obviously my time is, is, is uh, expired, Mr. Chairman. I, I have to tell you though, in, in my professional career in, in biological warfare, I have never seen anything like this. By the way, the worst concern I have, this may not be the only one. This is one that it's probably not the only one. It would, it would be unlikely that this is the only one. If they have these in California and you just happen to find it because this idiot ran a garden hose out of the wall, like that's not going to look suspicious. Like whose genius ass idea was that? These are the people you're trusting to run a Chinese bio lab, undercover bio lab, dude drills a hole in the wall and pokes a garden hose out like nobody's going to notice. Freaking moron. Then a housing code inspector for out. Let's marshal all the housing code inspectors in the country. Turn them loose to find these things. I appreciate the gentleman's patience. The gentleman's time is up. So frustrating. So completely frustrating. So, all right, let's, we're not done. We're not done. So this is Kevin McCarthy's district, by the way. So what's Kevin McCarthy doing about this? Kevin McCarthy seemed like he didn't really want to touch this either. They, he was, uh, he was a little distant and standoffish when they approached him with this as well. It took him a little bit to get back to people, but let's see what he's saying about it now.
The owner of the lab, Start up. first and foremost, um, a few hard truths. The owner of the lab shouldn't even been in America. He was here illegally. He had a judgment, as you watched in this report, from sp stealing IP from Canada and America for more than $330 million, living under a false name, and illegally providing this lab. But something that the ranking member brought up, unbeknownst to many of us, and we are lawmakers, how easy it is to get such serious pathogens to be able to purchase them online. And what we have found through this investigation, the millions of dollars running from China to this facility. First and foremost, well, what's really going to bake your biscuit is when you see where some other money was going to this facility, where the where some other money was coming from. So Kevin Kevin Kiley put out a post earlier regarding the same thing, and he's been harping on this from the beginning. I should say, I'm not too stoked about Kevin Car Kiley's voting record, but he has been talking about this a lot. So the international fugitive behind the secret Chinese bio lab found in California, Jesse Zhu, has been arrested and charged in federal court. He received large unexplained payments from China while operating the lab. Many questions remain, which Congress, which Congress must continue to investigate. Why did the CDC ignore local officials' reports about the lab for months? <laughs> we just talked about this. Why didn't they test any samples from the thousands of vials with unclear or coded labels? So there's a bunch of labels that were in the Chinese language or they were in like not a language at all, coded. Why didn't they test those vials? How did they miss a freezer labeled Ebola, an entire freezer labeled Ebola? How did this lab escape detection? How many more such operations could there be in California and across the country? What was the lab's true purpose? Selling medical test kits didn't require transgenic mice and dangerous pathogens since Zhu's company was simply reselling counterfeits from China. So remember, that's what they charged him with. That's all this dude got charged with, apparently, is selling COVID test kits. That's what this dude is charged with? Like, okay, what about the Ebola and the mice? Yeah, it, there's a cover up going on here, you guys. This there's there this this can't be anything but a cover up. Like everybody wants this to go away. I'm telling you, it's that freaking garden hose. Uh, that all it was is the garden hose. That's the only reason they found out about this. This genius decided, well, for whatever it was, ventilation of something, decided let's just drill a three quarter inch hole in the wall and poke a garden hose out. Let's make it green too, so it's extra obvious. Like, they could have done so much stuff. They could have screwed a junction box in. They could have made it look like something else. It's lazy. That's hilarious. This guy, this guy seems super lazy, too. So let's look at some of the pictures. Like, all this dude got charged with was selling COVID test kits. This is insane. So here's some pictures that Kevin McCarthy's sharing here. So, yeah, you know, you just got all these bottles with weird labels on them. Like, I mean, I'm just some dumb podcaster, right? If if all of a sudden I was put in charge at the CDC, I would be like, okay, we don't know what this label means. Okay, let's do we have the means to test and find out what's in this bottle? Oh, we do? Okay, let's just do that. Do, can we test this bottle too? Oh, okay. Well, you know what? There's not that many bottles. Let's just test all the bottles. Why didn't you test the bottles, CDC? What is this? Uh. Wait a minute. Does this say MDMA? Oh, that I'm sorry. This looks like it says MDMA. That's that's Molly. That's that's ecstasy, guys. That's a drug. Um, I haven't even heard anything any any talk about drugs. So uh, okay, well, okay. That looks like it says MDMA right there. So I'm just okay. Okie dokie. The whole thing just keeps getting crazier and crazier the more you look into it, and it does get a little bit crazier here. 
Now, this is reported from Max Bonilla. He's a young independent journalist, very young, like early 20s. And he stumbled across something. I don't see anybody else talking about this. I don't see Kevin McCarthy talking about this. I don't see Kevin Kiley talking about this or that congressman or anybody else. So I'm. he stumbled across a document that shows something interesting. So let's just – he. I'm hoping he didn't get too big for his britches here, but he's making a very serious allegation. So – Max says Gavin Newsom gave $360,000 to the illegal Reedley Chinese lab four years ago. Why wasn't this mentioned in the debate? Gavin Newsom literally put our national security at risk by funding the creation of the new possible uh, uh, creation of new possible bioweapons. The mainstream media has has been dead silent about the fact that on March 24th, 2019, Governor Newsom's Office of Business and Economic Development a California competes tax credit allocation agreement of $360,000 was cemented with universal Meditech Inc. The congressional select committee on China better do an investigation on this. Okay. So that's the guy that was just talking. That was just interviewing the head of the CDC. That's the congressional select committee on China. He's part of that. So what is Meditech Inc? Is that the company? Is that the company that the zoo guy was Je- jesse zoo is that was what he was in ha- ha- the head of so here's his doc this is here this is this is from max this is the tweet that he just put out and then this is the document that he yeah this is the document that he's claiming is proof that the governor's office gave them three hundred and something thousand dollars in tax credits so Okay, so this is um, is a DocuSign envelope, and it has this is the, the California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. It's got their seal on it. California competes tax credit allocation agreement. This says this California competes tax credit allocation agreement is by and between Universal Meditech Inc., a California corporation, taxpayer, and California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, here and after jointly referred to as the parties or individual as the party. All capitalized terms not defined in this agreement shall have the same meaning as in the California Revenue and Taxation Code sections, blah, 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 and blah, 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 and California Code of Regulations, Title 10, Section 8000, blah, 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 as it affects the effective date of this agreement. In consideration for the mutual covenants and premises in this agreement, the party the parties agrees as follows. Effective date, effective date of this agreement shall be the date of this agreement is approved by the California Competes Tax Credit Committee. Total credit award. Go biz, go dash biz, G O dash B I Z, comma, upon approval by the committee and conditioned upon the requirements set forth in this agreement, will award taxpayer and California competes tax credit. CCTC in the amount of $360,000. Specifically, taxpayer is receiving a CCTC against the net tax as defined in RTC section 17039 or the tax as the defined RTC section 23036 as applicable applicable pursuant to RTC section blah, 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 as applicable. So why would they need that tax credit? So they got this $2 million from the CCP. That's what they... Could this tax credit be so they don't have to pay any taxes from that $2 million? Like, what is this tax credit for? That's what I'm confused about. But, it. I mean, if, if this company, Meditech, is that what it is? Meditech? I lost it. Yeah, Universal Meditech. If this company, Universal Meditech, is headed up by that Jesse Zhu guy and they got $2 million and then they got this tax credit, that that would make sense that 
that it would have something to do with that. I don't know. I'm just speculating now, but this whole thing, man, this whole freaking thing is so nefarious. So yeah. All right. That's just, that's kind of it. That's kind of my overview of the uh, Ridley biolab situation.